Welcome to worship on this Feast of the Pentecost. Uh, this Sunday will be our last online recorded uh, service. Next Sunday, we'll be worshiping together here in the sanctuary, although that service will be recorded um, and maybe broadcast live or at least after the fact, uh, next Sunday, June 7th, which is Trinity Sunday. Just a reminder that there is the town hall meeting um, this morning. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even as we glory in the gift of eternal life, in that hope we set, spend our days in joyful repentance and faith. Let us confess our sin, the sin that still so easily besets, and receive the full forgiveness of our Lord, who daily provides for us.
We are your baptized people, O Lord. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us into our Easter and Pentecost joy. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson this morning comes to us from Numbers chapter 11, verses 24 through 30. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, my Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. The epistle lesson this morning comes to us from Acts chapter 2, starting with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that we hear, each of us, in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. 
the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that every one who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Spirits of the living God fall afresh on me. Spirits of the living God fall afresh on me. The Holy Gospel for this festival of Pentecost is written in John chapter 7, beginning with verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of our Lord. Or maybe your husband 
knocks off a couple of the items of a honeydew list without being asked. Or maybe even our children or grandchildren come to the table for a meal the first time that they're asked. Or even clean their room without too much talking back. So we do wonder why these things happen to us, and they do happen occasionally or from time to time. And so we may ask ourselves, what does this mean when things like this, things that stand out for us? Well, as we hear in the events that describe that first Pentecost, it is important for us to maybe ask that same question. What does this mean? This is a question that people have asked, asked in our story for sure, and have been asking ever since that time. You see, for three years, the disciples were with Jesus. They walked with him. They learned from him. They did everything with him for three years. And then he was gone. And they had seen him ascend into heaven. And they had received the promise at that time, the promise of the Holy Spirit. But they were not quite sure what that meant. Well, how about us? How sure are we? Do we know what the promise means? What that means for us? Luke wrote the book of Acts to a people that were experiencing persecution in those early days. He wrote it to strengthen the faith of all believers of his time and even for us today. And Luke wrote to dispel the ill-founded beliefs and the reports about Jesus. Luke especially wanted to show that the place of the Gentile Christian was in God's kingdom, along with the Jewish people. And it's based on the teaching of Jesus. So Luke was presenting a preaching of the gospel, if you will, to the people, to the whole world at that time. In many ways, we are in the same place as those early Christians in Luke's time, as written in the book of Acts. But we have never seen Jesus like many of them had not. I mean, Acts was written somewhere around A.D. 60 or 63. And only a few of us have ever witnessed a healing miracle. And even fewer have been suspect of seeing or actually experienced an exorcism. So we, at times, struggle in life and we may wonder, is Jesus really with us? An assurance that we have is the event of Pentecost. That event loudly proclaims that God is not satisfied with being a distant God, but rather God wants to be intimately involved in our lives. God is a God who wants to be involved in the everyday affairs of mankind. But still, we know at times in our lives when we feel so powerless about the events, the things that are happening. And it happens to everybody from time to time. And we push God away, or we forget that God is there to be with us. There are the times when God seems so distant and Luke wants to assure his readers that God is powerfully there every day through everything that we go through. He is with us, with us through the work of the Holy Spirit. And that is what Pentecost celebrates. That is what Pentecost is all about. With a mighty wind that descended upon the disciples on that first Pentecost was not a destructive wind, but rather just the opposite. The wind was a breath of life. 
Today, the Spirit moves powerfully in our lives and giving us new life every day and a new hope through the work of Jesus Christ. Well, we live, Debbie and I live in Rio Vista, a little town on the delta along the Sacramento River. And those of you that know the area are quite familiar with seeing those big wind turbines that dot the hills all over that area. And when I think about the Holy Spirit, I think about how the wind powers those mighty turbines. And just as the wind is steady and powerful against the turbines, that is what the Holy Spirit is for us. The work of the Holy Spirit is powerful and can be seen in our lives. The Spirit enables us to communicate the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ with those around us, with our family, with those that we know and work with. The Spirit gives courage to the frightened disciples, empowers them to preach to a crowd of thousands. And today that same Spirit gives courage to us when we go through the troubles of our lives from time to time. The wind of the Spirit spreads the gospel to all corners of the globe, to all mankind. The Spirit enabled the disciples to speak in the languages of all the people. Well, to me, this shows that there are no secrets to entering the kingdom of God. Instead, the gospel is translated into the language of all people. Everyone can hear the good news of Jesus. That is one of the unique characteristics of Christianity, how the gospel is translated into the common language of the people. A first and real example, I think, of the inclusivity of the gospel. Pentecost is about more than the miraculous and the spectacular. Pentecost is the proclamation of God's presence and power for all people. God coming in to our lives. God's preferred future has now broken into the world, our world, so that people may experience life as God's children and walk with Him, walk with Him through our life, and eventually walk to an eternal life with Him. So I pray that your journey will lead you into this heavenly walk through the power of the Holy Spirit as we see on that first Pentecost. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And it is. Amen. We profess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we continue to remember Kathy Simonek undergoing chemotherapy treatment, and also Adeline Forsyth, who has been in and out of the hospital in these days. 
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer before you our common supplications for the well-being of your church throughout the world. So guide and govern it by your Holy Spirit that all who profess themselves Christians be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in the unity of the Spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send down upon all ministers of the gospel and upon the congregations committed to their care the healthful spirit of your grace, that they please you in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessings that they be inclined to your will and walk according to your commandments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation, that you would make known your ways among us. Preserve those who travel, satisfy the wants of your creatures, and help those who call upon you in any need, that they have patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will be released from their afflictions. Especially on this day we remember Kathy, Adeline, and those whom we silently name in our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, rose victorious over death and the grave. We remember with thanksgiving all your servants who trusted in Christ and now stand in your nearer presence, where all sorrows are turned to joy. Strengthen us in the confident hope of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, that we await with joy our reunion in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting you in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace, serve the Lord.